In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to do the limit of 1 over x, which is also the derivative of 1 over x. I will show you how the tangent line, the slope of the tangent line, is always negative. This is kind of what the end product looks like. Don't be intimidated by it, but I'll walk you through it step by step. I think it's always a good idea to look at the graph of the function we're trying to take a limit of or derivative of. And this is what the function looks like. The slope of a tangent line is always going to be negative. That green line is a tangent line. Again, the slope's always negative. It's easy to find the slope of any straight line. So if I pick two points and draw a line through it, I can find the slope. But if you notice there's some error in that, the white area is the error. So if I move those two points closer and closer together, you'll see there's no more white area and the accuracy becomes really accurate, the slope of the line. It's a tangent line, slope of the tangent line. I could do this on either quadrant, but I'm going to work on the upper quadrant, the one right there. I'll pick some value, x naught right there. And this value is 1 over x naught. The way I get that is just plug my x value into the function. I'll pick another value and I'll call it x1. And the function equals 1 over x1 here. By the way, this distance here I'm going to call delta x. And that little delta sign is Greek delta. It means change in. x1 is going to be equal to x naught, which is this first distance, plus delta x, which is the second distance, that distance there. And I can plug this into the fraction. So this x1 here is the same as that x1. So I can slide that over like that. So the slope is going to be equal to, in this case, slope is equal to rise over run. It's always that way, but rise goes down, and run moves left to right, right there, like that. This is going to be equal to 1 over x naught plus delta x, that value right there, minus... one over x, not that value there. All this will be divided by x1 minus x naught. And this is the same as delta x, so I'll put delta x in there instead. The numerator is the tricky part, and we're going to simplify that, and I'll walk you through that step by step. To quickly review, if I pick these two points and draw a line through those two points, and I let those two points get really, really close together, I'm doing limit of delta x goes to zero. So what I'm letting is, is the distance between those x naught and x1 get really, really, really small like that, where delta x is almost zero. Let me put things back so I have a little bit of space. like that. I'll need to simplify this equation because what I'm doing is, is I'm doing a limit as delta x goes to zero. And I can't just plug a zero in for that delta x because I can't ever divide by zero. So I need to simplify. So I'll take this delta x and factor it out. And the way I'll do that is divide or multiply times 1 divided by delta x times 1 divided by x naught plus delta x minus 1 over x naught. And to subtract the second one from the first part of that equation, I need to get a common denominator. So I'm going to multiply x naught over x naught times the first part of the equation, and then multiply x naught plus delta x divided by x naught plus delta x times the second part of the equation. So now I multiply x naught times 1, which is x naught. 
And I'm going to do the whole numerator first. Now I take negative 1 times x0, which is negative x0. And now negative 1 times delta x, which is negative delta x. And all of this divided by x0 times x0 plus delta x. The two x naughts on the numerator cancel out x naught minus x naught. Now I take 1 over delta x times the numerator, which is negative delta x, divided by x naught times x naught plus delta x, right there. Now these two delta x's cancel. So I'm left with negative 1 on the numerator. So I can rewrite this as, as the limit of delta x goes to 0, I have negative 1 divided by x naught times x naught plus delta x. And this is all equal to negative 1 divided by x naught times x naught, which is x naught squared. As delta x goes to 0, that's going to be 0. So x naught times delta x is nothing. It's 0. So I can ignore that. I'll write this as f prime of x is equal to negative 1 over x naught squared. And this is the derivative. Let me change the color to green for that and graph it. And notice that the tangent line is always negative. And that's the slope of the tangent line at any point. It's always going to be negative. Like that. So it makes sense. Okay. Up next, I'm going to show you how a triangle bounded by the tangent line and the axis is. The area is always equal to 2. And this is true regardless of where the tangent line is the area of that triangle is always going to be equal to 2. Kind of a crazy idea. So make sure you share the knowledge. Go to Facebook. Like us on Facebook. The link is right below right there. Also subscribe to the channel. There are more calculus videos to come.